Let's go on the record. This is day two in our final hearing. Any preliminary matters to place on the record before we call a witness? I would like for everyone to reintroduce themselves to the lady representative. That would be helpful. I, I didn't hear you, Oh, I would like for everyone to reintroduce themselves to the lady representative. Oh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Timothy Riley, law firm Popping Green Sands, representing Sable Trail Transmission LLC. Richard Brightman from Hopping Green and Sam's on behalf of Sable Trail. Sid Bigham from the Department of Environmental Protection representing the department. Jack Tuson from the Department of Environmental Protection also representing the department. Yeah, Ian representing the Walls Watershed Coalition. William Wilson from representing the Walls Watershed Coalition. Uh, John Porterman, there my counsel. French Brown, Hopping Green and Sam's representing Sable Trail Transmission. Any other preliminary matters? Department, uh, rest your prime fish case? Yes, sir. So, petitioner to call a witness. I would like to call Marilee Mollett. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. State your name for the record. Marilee Nowitz Gibson, M E R R I L L E E M A L W I T Z hyphen J I P S O N. Your witness. Thank you. First things first, are you a member of the Walls Watershed Coalition? Yes. And would you be affected by the pipeline coming through the area? Yes. And how would you be affected? I think the largest effect that we'll have, uh, at least my family and myself, will have with this pipeline is stigma. And what kind of stigma are you talking about? Well, much like the BP oil spill, if there were something to happen to this pipeline uh, regarding the place that it's being put, uh, certainly the Santa Fe River, which has been expressed uh, repeatedly regarding this pipeline, uh, people would say, well, oh, should I tell you about my background? I mean, sure, sure. go ahead. What's your background? Okay, so um, I've been an advocate for the Santa Fe River since 2006. I started as a board member with our Santa Fe River. In fact, we started the, the organization, many of us. I became president of the organization for seven years, and now I'm policy director. I'm also uh, privately with my husband, uh, co-owners of a, of a kayak and canoe livery that uses the Santa Fe River. We're also owners of a fine art gallery within that, within that business. So um, the Santa Fe River is very much uh, a part of my life. And when you were talking about stigma, what, what were you talking about? Well, if something were to happen to, to uh, the pipeline in the Florida Springs Heartland Corridor because- Objection, calls for speculation. Your Honor, I also I don't think that stigma is within the zone of interest that's covered by uh, the environmental <coughs> rules and compliance. Well, my witness is a business owner, and she is concerned about economic loss potentially from her business. I understand that, but I don't think that's within the zone of interest that's protected by the ER purpose that's involved in the ER business. I think she's trying to show how she's substantially affected. Judge, I'll allow some inquiry in this hearing. Continue, please. I uh, you left off about your kayaking business and if there was a pipeline in the area. Right. So the pipeline is directly being placed within the Florida Springs heartland. Um, and we're concerned if there were some sort of uh, impacts with this pipeline being placed in this particular region of North Florida, that my business will be impacted. Okay. Has anyone inquired? Um, about your expertise in the Santa Fe River area? Yes, I get calls frequently. Are you familiar with the Hamilton County Resolution that was made? Are you familiar with the specific Hamilton County Resolution that regards um, karst? 
Yeah. What about the pipeline? Objection I, relevance, Judge. What Hamilton County the board uh, thinks about the pipeline is irrelevant. It's a government document that will show um, that they're concerned about the car's topography and the area. Not, I'm not really interested. In, the case is not really about concerns. It's about actual impacts, actual impacts that uh, competent people can testify about. So a lot of people can be concerned, uh, but that's not what's going to go into the record. Okay. Um, may I add a bit more? There is attached to that resolution a report from a geologist that Ms. Mollis is familiar with regarding the car's geography of the geology of the area. Your Honor, uh, Sable Trout Jacks, I believe the report she's referring to with regard to the crossing of the Whippecoochee River, which is no longer proposed. Would it also be hearsay, Judge? Sounds like relevance and hearsay. It's, it sounds, I mean, clearly it's hearsay. Right. Um, so it would be, we did have a stipulation as to indicia, documents that we have government indicia. Just as to authenticity, though. Okay, so I'm saying it's relevant in that it talks about the geology of the area and it has a report from a licensed geologist that Ms. Mullins is from there. Still here, sir. The only question was to the witness was have you, have you seen it or have you heard of it? So it's no actually about it. I believe the report was admitted yesterday as an exhibit to exhibit C. When Tom Edwards was uh, on the stand. That's different because that, that is an agency whose, whose job it is to um, put out public information about the water resources within the district. Um, this, is, this is not the same situation. Um, I, don't, I don't see how it's uh, acceptable. It's hearsay. I don't even know about the relevancy issue, but it's clearly hearsay. And for example, maybe there, maybe it's wrong. How are we going to test that? Everything has to be tested in a trial, a legal proceeding, and everybody has the right to question the author and find out uh, how they reach their conclusions and to show that their conclusions are wrong. We can't do that with hearsay. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move on. Um, did you walk the corridors with anybody in particular? Yes, I walked with David Brown and two geologists of FERC. And by corridors, what, what do you mean? Well, uh, re with respect to uh, the Santa Fe River, uh, we walked the court. We, we, we asked FERC to walk the corridor with us, uh, we being David Brown and myself. Um, and we found that there was uh, ex uh, extensive springs uh, Car stick, uh, car systems within. Objection! It calls for expert opinions as to these specific geologic concepts. As to what you can see on the surface, what can you just see? Car windows. Objection! Holes. Same objection. She um, wants to just physically describe the ground. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Object. Please just describe the ground. What you see. And don't use technical words such as cars. Um, with, with all, with all, I mean, that's how we talk about things. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little confused. And maybe somebody can explain how I'm not allowed to use cars or cars window because that is how we talk about things in North Florida. We talk about certain springs and conduit systems and cave and, and limestone. So it, to me, I don't have to be a I mean, I don't have to be a geologist to say these words. And I'm, I'm, I'm understanding. I can't even express them. So for me. I walked in an area of the Santa Fe River. It was wooded. It had line. It had. It had material on the ground that was limestone. It was limestone. It was karst. And what did you see? Well, we could see 
uh, water that was on the ground next to the, the, the dirt material, the limestone material. And when you walked further into the woods, there was water in a, a crevice, in, a, in an area that was recessed um, in, this, in this dirt. There was old growth. There was new growth. There was all kinds of plant material. The, the, the point to this is, uh, as a result of that walk, and then walking in the corridor, uh, another corridor that existed several miles over, um, we actually got the route uh, rerouted. So now it is in an existing corridor. Um, Sable or FERC or whomever decided not to use this particular, particular corridor that had this formation, you know, this forested area that had soil that looked like limestone. Um, so we weren't allowed, or they, they moved it over to the existing corridor, which originally is what we asked them to do. However, very interestingly, when we walked that corridor, I knew that there was a new pipeline because it had just been built approximately five years ago, and I was familiar with that, that it, it had gone in the ground. And when I walked the corridor with these, with these people, um, th there's like a pole that sticks out of the new one, and I said, okay, well, that's the pole. And then over there, there was another pole that stuck out, and I said, well, what's that? And they said, oh, they said, that's the 50-year-old pipeline. Or maybe it's older. And I said, well, so, so they're, they're collate. I knew about the new one, and I wasn't too, I was upset and concerned about it all together because of the nature of the, of, of the, river, of the river system close to the river. But, but nonetheless, um, then I found out that there was another pipeline. And now when I talked to John Peckino, there's even two more possible pipelines, and I'm not really even sure if they're in that corridor because I haven't seen other pipes sticking out, but John says there is. So my, my point to that is, when we, you know, I, I asked them at that point in time, well, what are the ramifications of that? Well, aren't they corrosive? Isn't this in a corrosive area? And how old is that pipeline, and what's in it, or what's it made out of? And all these questions that never got answered. I called the DEP. I called and talked to Tim Frosch, I think, or Roche Frosch out of Jacksonville. And um, I asked for any information regarding um, uh, inspections or pigs or whatever they, they inspect these pipelines with, and I never got any of it. So what we're in the ERP, I don't think there's anything in this ERP um, about any of the information with, with co-locating the other pipes that may or may not have problems. So um, that's something I discovered on the walk with these, with these men. Thank you very much. And also, do you get paid for any of these services that you provide no. other than the kind of thing, of course? <laughs> so no, uh, all voluntary. Okay. But you do get paid for the kind of business, yeah. right? Yes, we do. Just let me double check that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> I missed the details on your, your kayak business. Do you have a rental yes. business? And uh, how long have you had that business? Three years. And is the business going well for you? Yes. And you just learned that there was a pipeline that's been in maybe 50 years? Yes. And your business is still doing fine? Yes. Um, and now you're aware that there's an existing pipe? Yes. And do you know what kind of pipe cells are? Do they carry natural gas? Yes, they're natural gas. That's what I've been told. And the, the proposed uh, Sable Trail route doesn't go across any of your property, correct? Correct. Um, and does it cross where, uh, do, you have, do you own property at where you're, do you have a kayak stand or a, a rental or a, some type of spot on the river where you're renting? I own property on the river. I'm a quarter mile of riverfront. Okay. And then as far as my business goes, no, it's located at the end of Rum Island, uh, at the beginning of Rum Island Road, which is um, a park that's on the Santa Fe River. And the pipeline doesn't cross your property? Correct. Or your business property? Correct. And what do you do for full-time employment? Uh, own the business. So the, so the kayak business is your primary? No, actually no. Um, there's four businesses located within this business, technically five businesses, but four that we operate and own. Okay. What are the other three? So we have uh, the canoe and kayak, we have the fine art gallery, which is all dedicated to, to the springs and rivers. We have a hair salon and we have a snack shop. Thank you. No further questions? Just a couple minutes. 
Ma'am, you indicated that the way you're affected is by the stigma that it may attach to your business as a result of this new pipeline going in. Is that That's correct. correct. And are you impacted any other way? With respect to my business? Is there any other way that the, the, the this pipe proposed pipeline affects you or your interests? My interests certainly. I am very concerned about trenching. Uh, well, uh, beyond concern. Okay. I have been let me let me say that your concerns are not an issue here. It's how this project affects you. So can you explain okay. how else it might affect you? Sure. Um, with this project. I have received as advocate for our Santa Fe River and as also president of Save Our Swanee numerous phone calls from residents that want to ask me about what is going on. So I spend an enormous amount of time answering questions and redirecting them to people that can answer their questions. So in terms of how does it affect me, I am trying to be some sort of advocate liaison in a sense to direct people to get their answers or their questions answered. Okay. Anything else? I, I would think that would cover it. Okay. Uh, just so I make sure I heard correctly, you indicated that you walked along an area of the Santa Fe River, uh, saw a pipeline corridor, ultimately the the Sable Trail actually moved the location of her pipeline in that area, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. 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 Okay.